microphone to present it. Uh, now, I think if we were, uh, if one of two things would happen, if the Supreme Court would rule it unconstitutional, which is becoming more likely every day, if we saw it this week, uh, or I think the people will uh, go to the ballot box uh, next fall with that in mind and hoping that we can repeal it and replace it uh, before it comes in uh, to exist in entirely. What the would you stimulus, replace it with? What would you replace it with? Well, the alternative package that we had last year might be a good place to start. What was and it? that was, um, you can go read it online, it's the Republican alternative to the Obamacare package uh, from last Congress. But included in it was ideas to address the rising costs. Start with tort reform. You have people practicing defensive medicine for no other reason than to just protect uh, their their job, their livelihood, uh, because of the you know trial lawyers that really have a lot to gain from that. So it's got tort reform. It opened a competition across state lines. I mean, it still provided the safety net for folks with pre-existing conditions and those things through pools running at the state level. Increase the uh, health savings accounts. Go read it. It's 300 pages, but it does more than 300 pages to address the rising cost of health care than 2,400 pages of Obamacare. I'm not even going to go to the stimulus. I think everyone, maybe, that you can agree that was failed. That was a trillion dollars that was supposed to keep unemployment below 8%, and it's still 9.1%. Uh, nearly two years later, uh, I don't remember what else, but you know, we're just going to agree to disagree. Where do you think we'd have been without the student books? Uh, we would have a trillion dollars in the bank, and if we had used it wisely, and then actually done something positive with it, uh, maybe unemployment would be down. What we did was we just screwed. The government does not create jobs. The private sector does. So you need to incentivize Americans to create jobs. The federal government doesn't just hand out money and create jobs. And there are three barriers to job creation, taxation, regulation, and litigation. If we had used the money to address those areas, done something about these out of control regulators, whether it's at the financial institutions or USDA, EPA, HUD, they're off the chain. We need to uh, do something about that, do something about the crazy uh, lawsuits with tort reform, and then, like I said, do this tax reform to really get growth going. And I believe if we had invested the money in that, those areas, uh, we would have unemployment below 8%, and you wouldn't see GDP growth at 0.4% in the first quarter of 2011. Uh, you mentioned the USDA. Yes. And our food supply is becoming more and more precarious in terms of. She mentioned cuts in the USDA or that they're over-regulating, but you pick up the paper and there's an outright recall up here because of contaminated meat. I hear that there are not enough food inspectors. Well, I'm not saying that we're allocating the resources properly. Uh, maybe food uh, safety needs to be moved up on the list and they need to leave our uh, small family farmers alone. They're trying to regulate dust for heaven's sakes. Uh, they have no clue what it's like to live in the heartland, to be a farm kid and understand where our food supply comes from. And I, you can't talk to any ag producer in this state that doesn't feel like those folks are trying to put them out of business. I heard on the radio yesterday that they're trying to, any farmer that causes uh, a state or a federal highway with a tractor. Yep. Has to now become um, um, yeah. You have to get a number of uh, well, but what is it when you drive a truck that license? Yeah, but it's a way to get. get but it's a way to get another. It's extortion. Right. right. But why would a farmer have to, you know just across the road? Why would he need that that extra driver? I think that's the biggest frustration. Is if they? I mean, I hear stories. Of ex outright extortion from our regulators uh, going too far like this. And rather than using the legislative process and bring things uh, to us to pass laws, uh, this administration has started using regular. I mean, cap and trade is practically being implemented uh, just because they said, well, we couldn't get it passed uh, through a Democrat Congress. We're going to use the regulators to do it. This is a bad precedent. And I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat, it should appall you no matter who's doing it. 
They farmed a farmer down in Phoenix, Arizona for spilling silage on the they farmed on the highway. His truck yeah. was a little overfilled. They fined him three thousand dollars for spilling <coughs> silage on the highway. That's just one of the examples. Yeah. Can we go can we go back to government not creating jobs with the private sector? When they had the Bush tax cuts, they said that would create jobs. That was why they started. Can you name some jobs? I've been wondering just about your representative district. What jobs were created? What did we get here? I'm not seeing it, but I just wonder what they are. Where are they? Well, I always let this liberals like to call them the Bush tax cuts when Obama renewed the Bush tax cuts. That's so they really ought to call them well, the Obama the, tax cuts now. That's the identifier. Uh, well, but just the, so we're clear, yeah, yeah, the, that, that the Obama medical, agreed with them, right? The medical program was not Obamacare, but you choose to call it that. So that's kind of an identifier. So I just want to well, But the difference is jobs. Republicans don't agree with Obamacare. Well, Democrats agree with the Bush tax cuts. Yes. They voted for them when Congress was controlled on the House and the Senate and the presidency by the liberals. So Can I you think, just answer my Absolutely, question? because I, jobs. That's what I, I still know. think job creators are not going to create jobs when they've got higher taxes. If you're a small business man or woman in this room, and I tell you your taxes are going to be increased. And you've got, a, a maybe, if you're lucky, a just a, a break-even point at your business. And I'm telling you we're going to raise your income tax. And what are you going to do? Most likely you're going to go lay somebody off or fire them, which makes the spiral go down further. On the other hand, if you tell people that they're going to get a bit of a tax break and some relief, then the chances are that little bit of money that would come about from that, they would invest in property plant equipment, invest in a job. That's what an economic stimulus package looks like. Throwing money at a problem is not an economic stimulus. Can you answer my question, though? In your representative district, what jobs resulted from whatever you want to call it? Both Bush and Obama? Well, we could support. probably get some small businessmen and women to come tell you if you want specifics, but I'm not going to out anybody that has come to us with that anecdotal information. I think that would be breaking the trust. You can't justify and say we not have telling you in a public forum. No, I, I will promise you that it has happened. And if you want additional information, leave your name with Bill, and we'll get someone to call you and tell them your their story. Yes. Uh, I think it's a picture. I think a big you know. picture. You want a detail, and you'll have to get that from a small business man. Or it's a secret. You know, I agree with this lady that that's a nice story to tell that has no basis in fact. But the thing I'd like to talk about is Medicare that you skipped over earlier. When you guys decided to change that to a voucher program, it's not a you, voucher program. It's not a voucher program. No, again, lies, lies. Lies. Yeah. How is that a lie? It's a premium support program. There's a difference. Do you want to hear the difference? A, a voucher is when I give you a piece of paper, a voucher, and I say, go buy your own dang insurance. A premium support program is when you come to me, and I already have shopped, and I've got a list of four things, four people that will cover you, and you pick which one, and then we pay the bill. Part That's premium part support. Of the because of the, the people that are not, afraid not of- the entire bill. No, but nobody gets a, a free ride even today. What you're suggesting with a voucher is a lie. That implies that people in this room have to go shop in the free market for their insurance, and that is flat wrong. That scares people. That's wrong. Don't scare Don't people. It is you're guaranteed. You're the one that's scaring people. You're no, the it's one guaranteed. that's taking away. You shouldn't even be able to call it Medicare. Because Medicare is a social it's insurance scary. program, and what you're doing is fundamentally different. I, I don't see it that way. What, what well, I'm you suggesting. That way because that's the way it is. No. It is exactly what I have as a member of Congress. And most people always say, well, you have the cream of the crop. We have a premium support program. I, I am guaranteed health care, as will be the seniors. You just pick the plan that you want, and then the employer or the federal government, as seniors, if you're a senior, supplants the cost. But not the whole cost. I mean, as, as the years go on, that's going to be a smaller and smaller percentage of what the person has to pay out to get decent insurance. It depends. You're, you're I mean, throwing, if you pick the you're bottom... You're throwing the 75 and 80-year-old people under the bus to take care of the rich people that but contribute what about to your campaign. Income, yeah. a, income uh, adjustment I just talked about. See, this rhetoric, I get tired of the lies. I don't mind debating people on the facts, but to imply that the rich people benefit from that, 
because we just took them off of it? I mean, the rich people benefit <laughs> from, from the, the, the George Bush tax cuts that they won't even pay to support the. Can I quote? They won't even pay to support the war that we are sending men over four and five times to fight this in, this, yeah. in these wars. Yeah. We're sending and people four and five times to Afghanistan. Home. We're sending people four and five times to Iraq and Afghanistan, and the people with money won't even pay. We aren't asking them to go over and fight. We're just asking them to contribute some money. Why do we need fundamental tax reform? For the case you just made. And I really am curious and why of course, this and fundamental tax reform, we don't believe for a second that you're going to eliminate those loopholes. How else That's are you going to make it tax revenue? How are you going to make it revenue neutral if you don't? How are you going to you are not going to eliminate tax loopholes. We have a plan to do that. That's the only it way you can make it revenue happen. neutral. It is not going to happen. I, I can, I'll guarantee everybody in this room that tax loopholes are not going to get eliminated. You know and I know. Oh, that don't say that. I know different. It's not gonna happen. You, I don't, I don't know. You and I are never gonna agree, but you, you, it just amuses me that your president ran on bringing everybody home, and he's doubled down on that the war. Took us president. into That's Libya. First of all, everybody. What are we doing in Libya? I mean, I'm just still trying to figure that one out. Yes. You, uh, you favor uh, raising the taxes that the rich pay for these wars and everything more. Uh, I'm going to say this again. I am for fundamental tax reform, which eliminates the loopholes on the top. Who takes advantage of the loopholes? Can I quote Lincoln? Sure. Abraham Lincoln said, you don't empower the poor by disempowering the rich. I mean, I don't know who you think well, is taking advantage of the loopholes. In this country right now, 90% of the low-income people Starting at the bottom, uh, a uh, it's about the same tax at the top one percent. What you're doing essentially is wiping out the middle class. Well, right now, what we've got is the middle class paying the entire load because the folks on the top take advantage of the loopholes, and the folks on the bottom don't have a job because the job creators are afraid we're going to raise their taxes. So those in the middle class are paying the entire load. That is fundamentally unfair and wrong. What we need to do is reform the tax code. It is ten times the size of the Bible with no good news in it, and it needs to go. The richest man in the world, or the richest man in the United States, uh, surveyed his office. He found out he was paying less taxes for his income than all employees in his office. What have I just been saying? <laughs> Again, deals with Social Security benefits. Widows benefits. Today, if a lady loses her husband, or through a divorce, loses her husband, she continues to receive children's benefits, but and widows benefits. But if she remarries, she loses them. That's wrong. She should be able to continue receiving benefits. Otherwise, the widow must remain a widow, but if she finds a mate, she can live with him, but she can't marry him. And that's wrong. I, again, I appreciate that. All I will say is I'm not going to support changing anybody's Social Security rules if they're 55 or above. That I'm happy to put on the table. We can talk about it as part of this. This isn't but dealing you know, with people that are over 55. This is dealing with those veterans' wives that have lost their husbands in Iraq or Afghanistan. Well, That's sure we'll have a hearing, and no, you, you bring up a good point. We need to hear both sides. We need to find out the fiscal effect. I mean, you can't make a decision in Washington today without considering the fiscal reality, the social, uh, the social side of that. I mean, what message are we sending if you can live with somebody, but you can't marry them, and there's a punishment there? There's a lot of issues there that need to be sorted out. Uh, and the children still get to pay even with the mother and parents? I don't know. Do they? Do they? I think they do. So the kids still get it. So the kids would still get it. Yeah. Thanks.
change the subject? Absolutely. Completely. Um, 